and I had never flown before and flown very little since. I'm not, I'm not an enthusiastic aviator. Uh, it was a Grumman F4F Wildcat originally, and, and during the war, they changed it to a FM2. Another company started making it and changed their symbol. It was the best Navy Air uh, fighter pilot we had when the war started. This FM2 Wildcat had uh, uh, two in each wing, 450 caliber machine gun. There also, uh, rockets, uh, six, three under each wing, five inch rockets, uh, and, and the bombs, and uh, uh, fuel tanks, excess fuel tanks, which we could carry napalm in, which is a terrible thing to carry. Uh, we use some. I was there at Okinawa, mm -hmm. uh, the duration from a week before L Day, that was early in March, because Okinawa was where I could see it. This is the United States, uh, our amount of, of ships galore, you know, from being above going to, uh, I never s saw so many battleships and carriers. <laughs> <laughs> Just it's a tremendous fleet, you know what I mean, you knew you were looking at something big and we were getting ready to get into something big time. It was scary, but it happened so quick and so nothing. It was, uh, after we'd been hit by a kamikaze, our ship was hit by a kamikaze and uh, Went to the flight deck, and bomb went off inside. The whole ship buckled. I thought they hit another ship, you know. That was about seven o'clock in the morning, and about high noon, there was another kamikaze over the ship in the sun. And we were ordered to man our, man our planes that they wanted us to launch not to save the plane, but to save the ship. And that just unnerved me to no end, sitting there. With, I just knew the kamikaze was on his way. And I just sort of prayed and relaxed. Later, we directed the, my time to take off, and it took off normal. Not been normal <laughs> since I got off that ship that time. Now that's the most frightened I was because I didn't have anything to do but sit there and wait. We were to hit that target Ishima, which is a little island, and it was right at sundown. And uh, we're making this gunnery run on this airport and gun emplacements. They had quite a number of them and they're still shooting at us because we were occupying them then. And I was in a steep gunnery run, pretty steep, going fast as maximum speed and my plane was vibrating and I, I must have been hit with a small fire. I didn't feel it, but it uh, severed the oil line and the oil started, to, a little stream of oil coming up the windshield and I knew I was in big trouble. Uh, this was several minutes later. It was smoking in the cockpit and the lights were coming on red. Oil pressure went to zero and my plane was getting smoke. I had to slow down and open the canopy and keep my head out to see. And I was in, and it was getting dark and the rest of the personnel, there was four of us. 
and one of them, they miss, not have known I was in trouble. Well, they did. One of them come up by me. It was the flight leader. Come up, said, come on, get in here, come on. And I give him, I didn't have radio contact. Mm -hmm. He didn't. And uh, if he did, I never did get to correspond with And I gave every signal I could, you know, that emergency. I'm, in fact, I was talking on the radio. I couldn't. He just motioned, come on, and turned and blew off. They were headed for the plane. And I just had to fly so slow, just tried to maintain altitude long, and I loosed my belt ready to, you know, my parachute as long as I had altitude, and headed for the ship. And uh, it was getting dark, and I got by a ship, and I was trying to decide to jump or go water landing while I had control of the plane. When my altitude got to where I couldn't jump, I loosened my parachute and buckled my seat belt and took my wheel and <laughs> be sure my wheel up for water land. And it was dark, getting so dark I didn't know whether I could get to the ship or not. And I just I thought maybe you ought to land before it gets any darker and do what you got to do. Uh, I come to the ship and my radio, they must have, it was a nearness or something. The ship come on and said, Cobra Chick, that was our code name, Cobra Chick, you're, we'll have a running light for one minute. You're clear, come aboard. <laughs> I. Don't know whether they heard me or not, but I got back on my radio and said, "I cannot take a wave off. I cannot take a wave off. I'll come come aboard, but I cannot take a wave off." And I went, made my approach. I was already so low, and I had to get put my landing gear back down and do everything, uh, be sure everything for the carrier landing. And I made a good landing, made a good landing, and that engine just froze up. Doctor said, how do you feel? And uh, I said, I feel pretty good. I'm sure glad to be, <laughs> be here. And uh, commander come in and eat my hind end out for being late. And burning that airplane up. <laughs> this is that full lieutenant, I tell you, most misplaced person in the world. And um, he said he's going to ground me. <laughs> and I was glad and I said, I'm fixing to ground myself, you nut. <laughs> no, I didn't say it. I said, well, I saw laughing at him. And, <laughs> and the doctor, ordered him out of the room. <laughs> he called him by his rank and <laughs> lieutenant. <laughs> the, mentally is in my custody in my office now and, and you are excused. You can do what you want to after I get through, but now you leave. And Chip, the executive, come in and hit me on the shoulder and said, Bentley, so glad to have you aboard. <laughs> And I said, I'm sorry about the plane. He said, we're going to throw it overboard. It's beyond the engine. We pulled some instruments and what we could, but it's it just charred. Uh, we can't do a thing with it. And I, I convinced him I was all right. And he uh, dismissed me. He said, will you fly again? I said, if they'll let me. <laughs> I was scheduled to fly the next day. It was never meant where you've been or what you <laughs> He never said a word. That was, I guess, the closest, mm -hmm. you know, to getting home. Yeah. And uh, that would meant at a reunion, 
by up in the 80s or something, we met in this flight leader. We were riding on a golf cart. And he said, I had a pilot was in my flight in the Navy. And he got killed from Arkansas. I said, no, I was in your flight, and I'm from Arkansas. I'm the only pilot <laughs> from Arkansas in your flight, and I didn't get killed. <laughs> and he said, that, uh, he said, he didn't know how to say it. <laughs> I didn't particularly care what it was for him to say it. He said, uh, Bentley, did I run off and leave you? I said, oh, forget it. Yeah. 